you very much indeed. Thank you so much. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and children. Welcome to the Generation Game. Nice to see you. To see you. Nice. Oh, what a nice little relations. Oh, welcome. Oh, do you know? Do you know? I'd just like to. But this is a special night. It's the seventh show of the seventh series of the Generation Game in the year 1977. How about that? Isn't that lovely? Oh, we're very pleased. And the BBC, you know, the BBC, they're, they're such a nice mob. They really are. The BBC, underneath it all. They... <laughs> no, as it's a special occasion, they've given us all a drink. <laughs> Seven up. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't even go to cream soda, but never enough of all that. Let's meet the eight. I mean, let's meet the... No, not eight. Well, I hope not. Anyway... <laughs> I think that was tonight's deliberate mistake. But anyway, <laughs> let's meet and let's greet to the gorgeous Anthea Redfern. Up in the <laughs> you nearly ran me out. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. That's the awful thing. I didn't mean it. I just uh, wanted to get my own back. All right, my darling. Well, yes. you've had terrible trouble getting here for the last few weeks and all the things that happened. Did anything happen at all tonight? Well. Funnily enough, yes, it did. Well, I hope it is funny. Well, so do I. I had an accident, but it wasn't my fault. It wasn't your fault? No, it wasn't my fault. Oh, I see. The car in front of me was driving far too close. <laughs> the car in front of you was driving far too close? Yes. Yes, yes. So I thought, well, I'd better overtake him and give him a piece of my mind. Oh, well, I hope you didn't overdo it, because you haven't got much to spare. <laughs> yes, but... Uh... <laughs> you see, I can get one in now again, can't I? Yes. Yeah, so what, so what, go on, what happened then? So I overtook him to give him a piece of my mind, yes. and one of us happened to pull up rather suddenly, yeah. and of course he went into the back of me. He went into the back of you? Yes, I did. Oh, road dog, well, I hope you got his number. Of course I got his number, it was so easy to remember, plus I have got a photographic memory. You oh, good, cool. so what was the number? L. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Look at that! Applause on a joke! We've never had applause on a joke oh, before. Yes, we have once before. Once before. <laughs> well, anyway, let's meet the eight who are going to generate at last. <laughs> anyway, over you go, my darling, and bring me on the first pair to hand, and we'll see what it's all about tonight. Uh, there we are. And here we have uh, Walter and Tracy Graves. I see over here then, father and daughter. Stay right there, Walter. And it's uh, Walter Tracy Graves. You're from Camden Town. That's right. And uh, you were born and live in London. You have two daughters. Lovely, lovely. You are an optical technician and say you can usually tell someone's occupation by the state of their spectacles. Is this right? Yeah. Well, can we put you... What's if that? I break them, I can usually tell... Oh, well, look, have we got a pair of spectacles here? Yes. There we are. To have, have a pair of spectacles. Yeah. Now, you don't know that. We know who they belong to, but just have a look and, and have a guess. I mean, we, we don't want to, you know, sort of turn around this way yeah. a bit, yeah? Like he's a painter. He's does a painter. Painting, does painting. Yes, you could, yeah, painting. Scenery painting, I should say. Something yeah. like that. Could be, well, yes. Would you know that is uncanny because you're absolutely wrong? <laughs> <laughs> because. <laughs> yours. No, they belong to our producer, Alan Boyle. <laughs> and he should be painting the scenery. He really should. <laughs> He's got paint on them, so Alan will find out afterwards. In fact, we'll find out during the show if he actually did a bit of painting. Yeah. And we'll find out. That's very interesting. Uh, give the, uh, thank you, darling. That, that is really interesting. Thank you again. Well, now, you're known as Wally. That's correct. Or Wall. Wally. Or, or Wally or Wall to your friends. Yeah. You, you have two bottom false teeth. Oh, yes. And one day, when you were having a doze, they slipped out and the dog chewed them to bits. <laughs> well, what kind of a dog was it? A setter? <laughs> a setter, see? <laughs> but the red setter, he must be the bottom setter. <laughs> Never mind, it's gone now. Right. You say you, you, say, you, you say you look like an upside-down vampire without them. Well, it's... All right, all right. <laughs> don't have to show us, but it's nice to know if we need a big laugh later on, all I've got to do is hang you upside down. All right. 
Oh, it's nice to be working with a pro. Right. <laughs> Over now to your daughter, Tracy. Tracy, you're 18 and you've, uh, you've had to go back to school as you've failed your A-levels because you want to be a nurse. Yeah. Well, it's very brave. So you're going back so that you really get through it, so that you do pass out. Well, that's lovely. It's nice to know somebody's got that much determination. You used to work in a supermarket on the jam shelves. Golly. Um, <laughs> But you broke a jar every day, say they moved you. Yeah. Oh, dear. Well, I hope when you're a nurse, they don't put you to work in the blood bank. <laughs> you could cause a lot of trouble. Might be handy for Daddy, who was hanging upside down. At the <laughs> anyway, you went to holiday to Tangier and visited a camel market where camels were being bought and sold. Yeah. You see? The men in the market wanted to buy you. Yeah, well... Oh. I'll make a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like... Uh, <laughs> Female. <laughs> right. The men. <laughs> Only kidding. Yeah. The men in the market wanted to buy. Yes. Uh, you love writing letters, and you have four pen friends. Yes. Oh, felt or biro. <laughs> <laughs> Both. I see. Good. You like anything artistic and model heads in clay. Would you like to model my head in clay? You know. Yeah. Might take a bit too much clay there. <laughs> might take a bit too much. <laughs> Get over here with your daughter. <laughs> I'll tell you something, you're not going to win. Right! <laughs> over now! I can influence things. Right. <laughs> Who have we got now? Uh, this is George Taylor. Well, just a bit. I've got a new suit here and they're selling the blooming things. Let me try to suit at the back. Right, OK. Right. It was all sewn up. <laughs> right, OK, right. <laughs> we're going to generate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sorry, guys. Go on, go on. Uh, this is George Taylor and Pauline Clark. Oh, I see. Thank you, my darling. Father and daughter again. And George Taylor, yours from Shrewsbury in Shropshire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Is that your wife? Like uh, what is that? Your daughter? Your sister? No, well, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you work for a timber company as a yard manager and a not plotter. A not water? It's visual stress grading. Visual stress grading, grading with woods. Yes. I see, right. So it's a knot plotter. Good, right. I've never... Before you plotted knots in wood, <laughs> you drove a lorry for 20 years. Yes. Oh, couldn't you find a place to park? <laughs> <laughs> but that was all it said in the timber I could park. You are a keen angler, and you won first prize for catching the biggest chub. Two chub. Oh, two chub. <laughs> yeah, were you fishing in a lock? <laughs> <laughs> Or oh, was it a key? <laughs> was it a key? Yeah. Once whilst fishing, after warning your son about an electrified fence, you sat on it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I bet that livened the bait up a bit, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> There's a seal in the circle. <laughs> Get back to your island. Right. <laughs> um, anyway, you're a knot plotter who's been a bit of a chopper spotter. And you caught a whopper, and you set an electric fence and got a shocker. <laughs> and that's your lotter. Over now to your daughter, Pauline Clark uh, Frankwell. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know been ill. Um, <laughs> also, it's, a place, sorry. it's a place near Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury, yes. You're 20 and an RNCR, that's National Cash Register, is that fine? Machine operator in the same timber firm as Dad. Oh, so it's a real family tree. Yeah. This, this is where you met your husband, Derek, and you've been married for eight months. Oh, that's lovely. Is he in the timber business as well? Yeah, he's oh. a splinter. You can have any little splinters? Knock <laughs> <laughs> on wood. <laughs> At five, you put a button up your nose. <laughs> At six, you had your foot in plaster. At seven, you took your younger sister out and lost her. <laughs> At eight, you dented a car by bumping into it. I bet the nine o'clock news is a bit dull that night. <laughs> Day. Or was that there were a year in between all that? Probably. Probably she can't remember anything this year. <laughs> right. You like cooking and tried to play the violin. Oh, fiddle on the griddle. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> Well it's a living. Right. <laughs> you got four pounds of tomatoes from your first tomato plant. How about that, folks? Come on! Good gracious. Wonderful. Might not mean much to you, but it means everything to you, doesn't it, darling? Never Love. Grew anything in your life up to you never grew anything in your life up till then. Well, it's beautiful. And you're making a Manchester United rug for your husband. 
What, out the tomatoes? <laughs> Same colour, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, you relax now. You're a bit shaky. Relax, don't worry. Bring the masseur on. Right. <laughs> We're now ready for game number one, all of you. All right, then. It's called Silence, Please. Silence, Please. You gentlemen have to do a bit of miming in this. Okay. All right, then. Now, let me explain. You girls are going to go over there and you're going to put on your headphones and you'll hear lots of music and washing up music and all that kind of thing going on because we don't want you to hear. We want you to see. You are going to mime. I'm going to give you the names of four or five different comedians and you just have to mime to your partner who that comedian is by doing an expression, doing something they do, and then when they've done that, you write down who you think it is. Is that clear? OK, if you'll get over there to your lectern and put on your earphones over there, now you get on the disc there, if you will, and Wally, you on the disc here. All right, then, the first one coming up here. Don't do it until I tell you. All right, then. That's who you've got to do a little mime of. OK, start miming now. Now. <laughs> Very good, wasn't it? OK. <laughs> what have we got over there, Anthony? And for number one, we've put Charlie Chaplin. Yes, and we've got Larry Grayson. Right. <laughs> so, it was. you're right. Yes. You're right with two points. No good. Nothing for that. Nothing for that. OK. So, the next one coming up. All right, then. Be a good one for you, this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Good one for you. OK, then. All right, then. Start miming now. His face as well. <laughs> have you written down yes, something? Yes, we have. Yes, you have. Uh, have you written down we something? Have. Yes. Bugs and what Bunny. Have you, what have you got? <laughs> Who? Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny? And all this one was doing was this all the time. <laughs> Put Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> and you could help. Right. <laughs> Right. I don't know why we played who these games. But, hey, who was it? I don't know. <laughs> it's my game. It's a secret. <laughs> no, it was Ken Dodd. That's why I was doing all this with the tickling stick. And because you didn't have any teeth. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Never mind. You should have done Christopher Lee. Anyway, right. <laughs> We're ready now for uh, the, th the third one. You did see that, did you, Wally? Good. OK, then. Start miming now. <laughs> Has it written something? Yes. yes? Have you written something here? Good. What have we got? And for number three, yes? we've put Larry Grayson. <laughs> and we put Frank Spencer, actually, so I'm going to give you that. It was, it was, uh, it was uh, Michael Crawford, which is Frank Spencer, so I'm going to give you two points for that. Very well done. All right, but none of you, none of you. And the last one, the last one coming up now. All right, then, now you can move up and down there if you want to for this, but do always come, don't come any further down this, but you can walk up and down. And the same for you as well. Okay, you can walk up there and back to here, but don't go too far forward. All right, then, start miming now. <laughs> they've, they've written down something, haven't they? They've written down something. Write down something. Have a guess. <laughs> You had an accident. <laughs> no, no, no idea. No idea. What have they written over well, there? We've put for number four, Max Wall. Max Wall, and we haven't got anything. Max Wall is right. So two points over there. Very well done. Good game. Thank you, Anthea. Come back here, my darling.
take your things off. Let's have a look at the old scoreboard. Walter and Tracy four, George and Pauline two. So there's only two points in it, so uh, all to win, all to lose. The next game is called Tear Away. Come over here. Tear Away, all right? Sit right down on your stools there. Well, don't, don't bother, actually, don't bother, because it's going to be very, very quick tonight. We welcome someone to our show. Although people think this is rather a childish thing to do, it actually is a thing that needs a lot of doing, and we're in the capable hands now of Mr Eric Hawksworth. Come along over here. Hey, Eric. Hello, there we are. We'll just get in here nice and quick. And the other two right round the back. Right round the back, lovely Wally, that's good. Now, yes, as I said before, you know, people do think it's rather a child, but you've written two books on the subject. Yes, I have, Bruce. So They're a very popular subject. Too, I know, yes. I know. There's much more in it. Anyway, away you go, Eric, in your own time, in your own words, just do a little thing for us. Yes, well, we'll take a strip of newspaper and we fold it in half three times, pressing the creases in nice and firm. This is the first fold. This is the second fold. And this is the third fold. Now we can start tearing and have a ripping good time. Because we're going to tear out a little doll. And we start by tearing her hair like this. Work down her face and across to her arm. Next, we form her dress. And at the bottom here, socks and shoes. The little doll needs buttons on her dress. And we make these with a couple of semicircular tears, seven. And to finish, we tear out a mouth and a pair of sparkling eyes. <laughs> now we can open out the strip and produce our row of miniature Paper doll. Very nice. Lovely, lovely. Now, well, I know that's going to be lovely. Now, can we just have a look at the other things? Because you can go a stage further by using sort of other kind of paper. Anyway, Eric, you explain. With, with coloured papers, you use the same technique. My clever wife, Margaret, actually trimmed these up with felt for the See, hair. See, they've got felt little yes. shoes on and felt little collar yeah, and there. Pattern and felt wrapping buttons. paper. And yes. the felt hair. Yeah, very inexpensive, makes a super decoration. Yes, the lovely yes. decoration. And also, if the kids want to start, because it's not long to go to Christmas, so you can actually make these kind yes, of things. Yes, foil bells. And, I mean, of course, you can make them by the yard very inexpensive. Of course you can. You save your mother a lot of money, so get cracking, kids. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you again, Eric. Come back and do some marking for us, if you will. And if you'll just come over here, get to your tables, and you've got about a minute, 15 seconds to do this. Nice. Do the paper dolls, the same thing, the little paper dolls, starting from now. OK? And, Wally, don't use your teeth. Seconds left, so you're you're just over halfway. You've got 30 seconds left now. We'll be getting those little buttons all ready now and the little eyes. Ten seconds left. Wherever you have to stop, put them down, and if you'll come back, Eric, we'll have a look and see what we've uh, got here. <laughs> That's the right way up. Well, great, isn't it? Kidder 2 could have done better than that. 
<laughs> well, it is difficult. Well, it, it I'd is, never do anything like this. It is a strip. It, it is has, a strip, yes. It has some holes in it, you know. And like. holes in the strip, yes. <laughs> yes well, I think oh, possibly three points. Three points? I think so, yes. Well, it's difficult to do. It's very high. That's very high. But three points, you say. <laughs> Okey dokey. <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh, this is better. This is bit much better, this. Uh, one eye, yes. But <laughs> one eye. <laughs> That's it. Oh, yes. Okay. Not bad, though, is it? No. It's, it's a little bit better, I would say. Again, a continuous strip. Yes. yes. Oh, yes, I think four points. Four yes, points four for that. Points. Well, well done indeed. Very well done. And how did Tracy get on here? Bum, bum, bum. Oh. Yes, look. Oh, yeah. The two eyes. That is lovely. Absolutely beautiful. It really is. Isn't well, it's it? a difficult thing to do first hand, Bruce. Five I know. points. I five really points. Five points. Is, is, is five. Yeah. You've done that marvellously well done. Well done indeed. I'm dying to see Wallace. <laughs> I bet he's dying to see it as well, he says. Yes. <laughs> well. Up the other way, does that help? No. <laughs> I didn't see there's any comments on here at all. No raps, business game contests, mm. Nimmo to help church. Oh, he always does. Right, um, there we are. But oh, I, yes. it's, it's all in one strip. It, it's very good. Yes, I think three points. Three points for that. Yeah. Eric, thank you for being with us. I'm sure a lot of people are going to have a lot of fun. Thank you very much indeed. Come back here, my love, if you will. Let's have a look at the old scoreboard. Walter and Tracy, 12. George and Pauline, 9. So there we are, just three points. We're sorry to lose you, but That's well done, Wally and Tracy. There's your goblet and your tankard. And, and we'll see you in our semi-final, which is coming up very soon. All right, off you go there. Lovely. Well done. Now, who have we got here? Uh, this is Jean and Geoffrey Brown. Ah, I see, there we are. It's mother and son. If you come over here, Jean and Geoffrey. And it's uh, Jean Brown, crook. Oh, yeah, at least you're honest. Um, <laughs> from County Durham. Mm -hmm. I see. And Jean Brett, how tall are you, dear? Four foot eleven. Four foot eleven, you're lucky. Yeah. Doris Morris. Did you see our Doris yeah, Morris on the channel? Yeah. Oh, fine. A small brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I usually have a hobbist, but never mind. Um, you left school at 15 and you went to work in a factory, but you hated it so much that you cried every night. Shame. Why, dear? Mm. Well, I wasn't quick enough, and they shouted at me, and I didn't like it. Oh, you weren't quick enough in the factory, and <laughs> no. they all, well, all the other girls had a go at you? Yeah. Oh, shame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Wait, oh, she's still there. Right. <laughs> so you went to work in the coop. Oh, oh the co-op. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, as a chicken or a pigeon, but... Uh, <laughs> As a chicken or a... But anyway, you love meeting people, but you're a bit of a worrier. Well, so am I, dear, so am I. Are you a Pisces? I'm a Pisces. Yeah. Well, I worry like... I mean, I was worried about meeting you. I thought, Jean Brown, she sounds a bit peculiar, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now we're together like this, you know, there's no... I mean, I feel now as though I've known you for two minutes. <laughs> so don't worry, you're not worried now. No. Oh, good, that's lovely. Gordon, who's Gordon? Husband. Oh, your husband. Is, is he here? Oh, good. Hello, Gordon. All right? Hello. <laughs> oh, he sounds a monster, dude. <laughs> oh. How big is he, dear? No, I'm not really sure. You don't know? <laughs> don't you ever... Five and <laughs> ten. <laughs> Five and... Well, he does sound a misery. Anyway, <laughs> Gordon brought the boss home for dinner. What, is he a cannibal? <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like it. Isn't he? <laughs> uh, but he didn't tell you until half an hour before. Oh, I see. Gordon cooked the meal. Oh, did he? Oh, really? He always does on special occasions. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? He's a good cook. Yeah, oh, oh, wait, I've heard of him. Gordon Blur. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Gordon. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's not good. <laughs> anyway, now over to your son, Geoffrey Brown, also crook. Yeah, runs in the family. Um, <laughs> County Durham. You you would have uh, you would have been called Dorinda if you'd been born a girl. <laughs> Really? Is that right? Oh, how is that? Well, 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 your secret is safe with me. <laughs> the <Rinder. laughs> Anyway, um, you wanted to be a stuntman for Crossroads. 
<laughs> yes, good line that. Yes, if you didn't get your A levels, but you did get your A levels. Yeah. Oh, good for you, Dorinda. Uh, <laughs> no, sorry. Let me. Sorry, I won't tell a soul. Um, <laughs> you are now attending Leeds University doing colour chemistry. Oh, that sounds interesting. Not black and white, the big stuff. <laughs> colour chemistry. Good. You play the cornet. Oh yes, yeah, strawberry or vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> and you were once in four bands at the same time. Oh, I'll make a note of that. <laughs> Love's blowing his own... <laughs> <laughs> yes. You gave up trying to play the classical guitar after six months at night school. Yes. Oh, couldn't you find the strings in the dark? <laughs> <laughs> and it took you two and a half years to make a stool because you're no good with your hands. Oh, I see. I wonder why you rided them. <laughs> <laughs> you have two left feet and you make homemade lager. Yeah, do you drink the homemade lager? No, I've just poured straight down the sink. Oh, <laughs> great. <laughs> it's awful stuff. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah, well, you, you've done the right thing because that's probably, you know, why you've got the two left feet. They're worried about if you drink the lager, you see. Like a pal of mine, you used to drink nothing but Oxo. He finished up with your cubic feet. <laughs> <laughs> Over here. <laughs> And we'll meet uh, Lars. Here's a hand. Hello. And this is Edna and Martin Webster. Edna and Martin. Oh, we've, we've been expecting a girl all day. Dorinda and Martin, we thought it was. Martin, it's Martin. Yeah, Martin. Sorry, sorry, I won't tell a soul. And we haven't had many Ednas on the show. Welcome. Hey. Ada, Edna's here. <laughs> <laughs> We've got an Ada down there. I'll meet, meet her last. Anyway, you're from Down End, Bristol. Right. I see, Edna. You were born and live in Bristol, and you've been married for 23 years to John, and you have two sons, Martin and Adrian. You work as a branch administrator in an insurance office. Would you say I was a good risk? <coughs> Fairly. Fairly good risk, yeah, fine. And you were on a bus once wearing your blonde wig, you paid your fare, uh, then you had a bit of a headache, so you took the wig off and put it in your bag. Shortly afterwards, the conductor came back and asked for your fare again. <laughs> you said you already paid, but he wouldn't have it. How embarrassing. So what did you do, Edna? And what happened? Well, I just sat there and I said, I have paid my, my fare. So he said, uh, I'm sure I haven't taken your fare. You were blonde when I came up the yeah. last time. So I said, well, yes, here it is. How you embarrassing. From the back of my oh, dear. <laughs> so you nearly had to pay twice. <laughs> <laughs> and I could just see that conductor the next day running up and down the bus saying, hey, yes, please. <laughs> Your ambition is to see Frank Sinatra in a live show. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, after meeting me, do you still want to do that? Definitely. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, in, in more so. Oh, it'll be an anticlimax. Anyway, <laughs> over, over now. Well, I hope you realise he, he's marvellous to see. I was him at the Royal Albert Hall outside, but he was marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Webster, you're also from Down End, Bristol. I see. You're 21, you live in Bristol, and you're a clerk in a medical insurance company. You're getting married next June to Wednesday. Is Wendy here? Yeah. Oh, lovely. Next June, just getting warm then. <laughs> <laughs> you work part time in a bar to save money for the wedding. You once went in for a competition at a holiday camp, a competition at a holiday camp, where you had had to dance. You started taking your clothes off, but when you got to your underwear, the entertainment's manager gave you two pounds to sit down. <laughs> Well, here's another two pound. We don't want any of that on our show, all right? <laughs> Better give you VAT as well. Two pound. That's 16p VAT, all right? You know what VAT stands for? Vest and pants. <laughs> Vest and trousers. All right, then. So keep on. He's keeping the money as well. It's only a joke. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the pub, <laughs> you once had to change the beer pumps at the bar. You'd never done it before and connected the bitter pump to the lager pump. The lager pump to the Guinness pump, <laughs> and the Guinness pump to the bitter pump, so that everyone got the wrong drinks. Oh, I see what you mean. So it was the bitter pump connected to the bitter pump. The Guinness pump connected to that. that was like, and they all got drunkers wrong. Get pumps, get pumps, get dry pumps. <laughs> that could have been a lovely moment. <laughs> Trying to run so many pockets now. Anyway, over. Oh, you're still there, dear. Good. But we well, couldn't see, is it? Right. We are now ready for game number three. Your first game, and it's called What a Whopper. All right. What a Whopper. All right then. So if you'll just get over there, Jean and Jeffrey over there, and Edna and Martin come with me. 
We'll tell you about the game. You've got it all written down there, so it's very clear for you. All right, then, but it's just how high, how heavy. And all these answers are verified by the Guinness Book of Records. So do play along with us if you'd like to. All right, then, so away we go. You've got 30 seconds to do this, starting from now. First of all, how high is the tallest tree? How high is the tallest tree in the world? And then how heavy is the heaviest ship? The heaviest ship, how heavy? In tons. How heavy is the highest? I mean, how high is the heaviest? How heavy is the highest inhabited building? How high is the <laughs> highest inhabited building? You try saying it, just don't. Give yourself two points. Right. What speed is the fastest bird in the world? The fastest bird, what speed can it reach? And how high is the highest mountain? You probably all know what the highest mountain is, but how high is it? And what height? The tallest man in the world ever. Not at the moment, disregarding Ronnie Corbett. <laughs> the highest man in the world ever. All right, it's up. Can you get in there, Anthea? And I'll just pop in here and we'll have a few facts and figures. All right, then. So what have we got for the tallest tree? Anthea, how high? Um, 60 feet. And by the way, the nearest one, the nearest one will get two points. OK, if you write on the nose, you'll get three points. All right, then. Two points or nothing, this game is all about. What was that? 60 feet. 60 feet? <laughs> and we've got 3,000 feet. <laughs> <laughs> And the answer is, funny enough, you're going to be nearer with 60 because it was 367 feet high. It's a coast redwood in California. But the very top is now dead and it is just now just over 366 feet high. So two points for you, nothing for us, 3,000 feet. <laughs> right, now for the... Uh, there's loads of room, he says. Yeah, loads of room. Yeah. Right. Number two, the heaviest ship, Anthea. What have you got for that yes, in tons? Yes, we put 500,000. 500,000? Tons. 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 Yes. We've got 96. <laughs> <laughs> 96 tons. Actually, you're quite near because the tanker Bellamia weighs 550,000 tons, dead weight. That's more than the total weight of, uh, of a half a million family cars. All right, then? So there we are. Uh, so two points for you for that. And moving on to number three. What have we got for that? The tallest inhabited building. Um, we've put one mile. And I don't know how many feet in a mile. Well, there's so 1,760, isn't yes. there? In a, in a, that's yards. All oh, right, that's yards. <laughs> I had to say that. <laughs> but you're still nearer than these two. We don't have to have the right answer, thank goodness. <laughs> it's 12,000 feet, these two have put. You live in a world of your own, don't you? <laughs> you really live in a world of your own. You're the nearer. It is 1,454 feet high. It's the Sears Tower in Chicago, USA. So two points for you yet again, Anthea. Yeah. Really? Right, now on to the far fastest bird. What have we got for um, that? Well, we've put 25 miles per hour. Ah, and we've put 70 miles an hour. You can see the answer here. It's just over 106 miles per hour. It's the spine-tailed swift. Must be in a bad temper, but there we are. 106 <laughs> miles per hour. All right, then. Reliably measured. So, two points for us that time. Uh, getting on to the highest or the tallest mountain. Yes. What have you got for that? Well, we've put for number five, 29,000 feet. Well, we've put 26,000 feet. You're very near. You're only 28 feet out. It is 29,000, Mount Everest, of course. 29,028 feet. So, two points for your side, Anthea. And the last man, the tallest man ever in the world. What have you got for that? And we've put seven feet eleven inches. And we've put eight foot two. We're the nearer. It was an American guy called Robert Pershing Wadlow who grew to just over eight foot eleven inches. So two points for us that time. Good game. Hope you enjoyed playing it at home. All right then. Come back here if you will. Let's have a look at the old scoreboard. Gene and Jeffrey eight, Edna and Martin four. So you're four points behind. All right then. We're ready for our next game, which is called Spider's Web. All right, come over here. Spider's web. Put your pinnies on. All right, then. There we are. Jolly good. Well, now, we've done lots of things with pastry and sort of making things with hand, piping and one thing or another. But here, we're going to another little part of that sort of 
wonderful thing, which I always enjoy watching, and we w welcome now to our show, Sue Parkin. <laughs> Come on up. Follow me, will you? Hello, Sue. Hello. How are you? Get right in here, will you? And the other two, right round the back of me. Right round the back, that's fine. Get nice and close. All right, Sue, there's a beautiful sponge cake. And I tasted ones you made earlier on. Oh, quite something. Anyway, in your own words, away you go. OK, well, first of all, we're going to make a piping bag with a piece of greaseproof paper. And one rolls this around your hand and then folds it over. And we're going to fill this with some jam. And this is sieve jam. Ah, very important that, is it, Sue? So we don't want the fruit in it, yes, otherwise... Yes, so uh, always, would, if you're uh, going to do this, get sieve jam so that it will pipe through. out and go right the way through, That's otherwise right. the fruit gets clogged. Quite right. Fold over the bag, and then we're going to pour the icing over the cake. And this is glacé icing, made with icing, sugar and water. Pour it over the cake, like that. Spread it over, and it's very important to do this very quickly so that the icing doesn't melt before you get the jam on. So spread it around. Yes, you've got to do that really quickly, haven't you, Sue? Yes. And then we snip the end off our piping bag yeah. and pipe it in circles all the way over the cake. It's very easy to do, providing you've got a steady hand. Yes. <laughs> it's all right. Jean only worries a bit now and again, but she's, she's quite all right. Right. All right. And then and to finish it off, we oh, drag the knife yes. across the cake you see? That's how to that's give that. this spider web effect, and oh. then back the other way. Ah, that's the trick. Tri well, not tricky, but that's the secret. Go back the other way, then it gives you the spider's... Spider's web. Spider's web. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> Beautiful. All right, thank you, Sue. Will you come back and do some marking? Lovely, lovely. All right, Edna, get to your places there. Get to your sponges. Your, your icing sugar's already there. And, uh, all right, you've got a minute, 30 seconds to do this, starting from now. Away you go. Jeffrey's in a terrible state there, and you're in a bit of a state here as well. But there we are, sort of, although the jam's a bit here and there. That's <laughs> right, the producer just shot himself. <laughs> We've been expecting it all day, yeah. Right, well, now, what do you think over here? Not a bad well, effort, really. Well, I like the decoration on the table. Yes, and all this round here, I mean, you know, um, the kids would love that, and you put the cat up there. <laughs> Clean the table in no time, wouldn't it? Really? I think yeah. three. Three four. out of five four, because four. Yes, oh, you changed your mind. Yes, four. All right then. That's very high marks indeed. And Mum didn't actually do as well as Sunny, really. Although she did. 
your hand was shaking too. You were a bit too nervous. Well, it is a very nerve-wracking thing to do, let's face it. But uh, what do you think? Three. Three? Oh, that's pretty good as well. Well, that's, that's very high marks. Lovely, love. Well, oh, I say, I say. You've done this Look. before. <laughs> What can you say about that? You do do a little bit of this sometimes at home. You're at, very, home. at home. Oh, yeah, we know you don't do it for a living. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't be on the show, would you? <laughs> <laughs> they are individually picked. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, what do you think? Um, I think five. Five? It's worth five. It's beautiful. What can you say? It's a clever little love. And with 36 infants to look after. Well, what is that? <laughs> We wanted that. That's the spider, not the web, isn't it? <laughs> what we've got is a spider there, and I don't know what that is. Well, what do you think, dear? The icing artistic. wasn't bad. It's quite artistic, yes. yes. Two. Hey? Two. Two. All right, then, Sue. Two. <laughs> All right, two for you. I've been very enjoyed. Well, thank you for being with us, Sue. Love Thank you, Sue. Come back here. Good game. Good game. Let's have a look. Come on. Look at the old spider. So, bad luck, you two. We're sorry to lose you, and good luck to you two. Well done. And we'll be seeing... Okay, thank you again. Whoa! Come on. There we are. We're now ready for our semi-final. Walter and Tracy play Jean and Geoffrey. So, good luck with all that. They're all from Wakefield, loves. <laughs> don't it spread well, don't it? <laughs> don't it spread well, don't it? Anyway, good luck with that. Have you taken your jacket off? Yeah. I thought it was a different fellow. Anyway, fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. Well, now we have our semi-final. Well, now we're, we welcome to us uh, this evening the Chevet Ranger Guides. And... <laughs> And party. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to do something for us that is very unique. I think it's very cute, and I know you're going to absolutely love it. And they've done it so well, they do it. <laughs> they've done it so well. Here it is. It's a Maori stick game. Bird, their leader. You are their leader. Yes. Well, I'd follow you anywhere, dear. <laughs> I'll tell you that. They don't. Daphne, they don't. <laughs> well, thank you for sort of bringing this to us and everything. And we want you to do some marking. But this is such a. Did you like that little tune? Yeah. 
I thought it was absolutely simple. What is it? Is it a, is it a, it good is a, name? a genuine Maori tune? A New Zealander brought it to a world camp in England. Some well, time ago. Uh, this could see punk rock off as far as I can. <laughs> I think it's the new thing, dear. I really love it. Will you come back and do some marketing? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much indeed. Lovely. Well, now, the vital, vital toss up. So, Jean, let's have heads or tails? Heads? Heads it is. Do you want to go first or second? <laughs> First, get, you're worried again, aren't you? She's worried. All right, then. So, off you go there, Wally and Tracy, into Bruce's room. And if you'll just come here, my love, and sit yourselves down facing each other. Good luck to you both. All right, then. Another couple of sticklers in the Maori stick game. Sakes. Well, they're from the, tr the from the from the guides, isn't that lovely? So, if we were to take home, all right then, Wally and Tracy, you've been thinking about it, have you? All right then, my darlings. Well, now come over here and sit yourselves down, face each other. All right then, kneel down the same way they are. That's it. Okay, face each other. All right then, and keep the tempo going as much as you can. You all right like that? Makes it more difficult. Oh, poor old Wally. All right. No, we don't hurt your knees. But if it gets a bit like that, slide over. Okay. All right then, poor old Wall. Okay. <laughs> poor old Wall. Okay. All right then, the Maori stick game featuring poor old Wall. <laughs>
Jeffrey, by the way, has it from the Mento. All right, then. Very well done. And come back, Jean and Jeffrey. And Daphne, if you'll come back to us, my darling. All right, then. And thank you, a girl. Oh, you did. Done well. Done well. <laughs> right, from Wakefield. All right, then. In you come, nice and close here. Well, Daphne, a difficult thing to mark because it is a very tricky thing. They I mean, were very close. Yeah, very, very, very close mm. indeed. But anyway, it's up to you. First of all, Mark's over this side. 16 out of 20. 16 out of 20. Well, that's very high. <laughs> really, a difficult thing to do. Really, you can do it for laughing after time. And what about over this side? Just the age 17. Just 17! <laughs> oh! Well done. Very close. Very close. And with one lead gone a bit. Yeah, it's... Well, we do that. Well, let's have a look at the old scoreboard. Walter and Tracy, 17. Jean and Geoffrey, 16. So, bad luck to you two. Sorry to lose you, but good luck to you two. And, Daphne, thank you again for being with us. Fun. And 60 years jubilee, I believe, it, you yes. Ranger guys. Yes, it is. Thank you so year. much. A lovely game, and thank you for being thank with you us. Bye-bye, <laughs> I saw you there, darling. And there we are, lovely ladies' leather thank vanity you. case, weekend thank vanity you. case, gentlemen's executive case. Here we are. Right. Bad luck, and thank you for thank being you. with us. All right, <laughs> off we go. It was a good game, that one, wasn't it? The Maori, the stick thing. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if you uh, kids want to play it at home, you know, just break the legs off the television. You've got two pairs <laughs> each, and you da 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 da. <laughs> Good fun. All right, then. Now we're to the crunch. All right, then. Father versus daughter. And I'm, I've got three questions. Each question is worth one point. The best out of three wins. First question coming up. Name the head of state of Yugoslavia. Tito. Tito. Well done, Wally. Good old Wally. Right. <laughs> the next one. What does a philatelist collect? Sam. That was together, wasn't it? I think it was together, so we'll count that as half each. All right, then the last one. Which fish does caviar come from? Sturgeon. Sturgeon, you're right, Wally. Oh, he did it there, didn't he? Oh, great. So there we are, darling. And I'm sure he'll win you a few more things. All right, Wally, round you go there. All right, then. Round you go this way. All right, then. Take the screens away, please. Now then, Wally... Lots of articles are going to pass before your eyes. We want you to have a real good look. All right, Wally, you've got 45 seconds to have a look, starting from now. On the conveyor belt tonight, we have a dinner service, a planted bowl, a cuddly, cuddly owl, a coffee and tea maker, a weekend case, stereo record player, an electric blanket, three books for the house, an infrared grill, Six avocado dishes. Bottles of whiskey, gin and sherry. A whatnot. Instamatic camera. An insulated jug. A mincer, blender and juicer. Cut glass decanter. Bathroom accessories. Electric carving knife and dish. An angle poise lamp. And a football game and potter's wheel. All right then. So round you come, Wally. Round you come and keep thinking all the time. Keep thinking. All right, as you need. Oh. Don't think about it. Right. <laughs> up you get up here. All right, you've got 45 seconds to recount your thoughts starting from now. Um, electric blanket. Electric blanket. Uh, a vase. A vase. Um, or a puffet thing, is it? A, a, a puffet thing. A cuddly owl. A cuddly owl. A cuddly owl, yes. Right. A dinner, yes. The dinner, dinner service. service. Um, uh, the stereo, coffee, stereo, the coffee the, set, the carver, coffee blender, yes, the carver, uh, the the camera, drinks, instamatic camera, the drinks, the drinks, the drinks, yes, you're uh, right, the whatnot, what's the, the infrared, infrared grill, grill uh, the games, dishes, the television games, the television games, okay, dishes, the dishes, we got that, I think, uh, the whiskey, uh, whiskey, we got that yeah, as well, we've got the whiskey, uh, um, the grill, we got the grill, the rug, the rug, the rug. The rug. The decanter, the decanter. Oh, the case, the lovely yellow case. Didn't he do well? Oh, wow. 